So far on this show, we've seen that the Italian film industry can do both jungle exploitation movies and Jaws knockoffs. So, what do you get when you mix those two things together? You get a movie that can't tell the difference between an alligator and a crocodile, that's what. The Great Alligator is a 1979 Italian killer animal movie about, you guessed it, a giant alligator. And like a lot of Italian exploitation movies, it's known by several different titles, like Great Alligator River, Big Alligator River, and just Alligator. Which is a little confusing, since that's also the title of another giant alligator movie made around the same time. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm surprised it took me this long to do a killer gator movie. There's a lot more of these than you think. In fact, when it comes to movies about killer alligators, crocodiles, whatever, I'm convinced they're second only to sharks in terms of the sheer number of them that are out there. I mean, think about it. How many killer tiger movies can you name? Because I'm guessing it's a lot less than what I just showed. The movie's directed by Sergio Martino, who also made Torso, as well as 2019 After the Fall of New York, a movie that, despite clearly being an attempt to cash in on Escape from New York, still managed to be pretty original and entertaining. So, who knows, maybe this movie will be too. Well, is there at least some nudity? Okay, just checking. So, like a lot of these kinds of movies, it begins with some people flying over the jungle, but we also get a funky soundtrack. A lot of Italian jungle movies show people killing real animals, but that slap bass is making me think somebody's gonna try and fuck the alligator here. The movie stars former Bond girl Barbara Bach, best known for The Spy Who Loved Me, although I think she might have misunderstood when they told her the movie was gonna be like Jaws. It also stars Mel Ferrer, who was in the middle of his I Only Do Gator and Jungle Movies phase. Extra points if they have the same title. No other park has such a wealth and variety of fauna. 782 species of exotic birds alone. Elephants, crocodiles, snakes. Okay, please tell me he's not just naming all the animals they're gonna kill on screen. Mel plays a developer named Joshua who's building a luxury resort deep in the jungles of... Uh... Actually, you know what? They never really say where this takes place, but it was filmed in Sri Lanka, so let's just assume that's where they are. Joshua's hired a photographer named Daniel to take some promotional photos. However, there's some concern that he might be exploiting the natives. The Kuma tribe. Our settlement here hasn't disturbed them. In fact, it's giving them employment. And tourism can only improve their standard of living. Yeah, just look at how much dynamite they can afford to buy now. Typical. Daniel just got there and he's already acting like an annoying tourist. But at least the scenery here is nice. This is my most valuable assistant. Welcome. Holly Pratt. I suppose that's a more dignified name than Agent Triple X. And damn it, movie, quit making me nervous by showing animals. Is cruelty one of the features of the tourist program? If you read the sign, maybe you'll understand. We don't want to be accused of false advertising. Considering that says Crocodile Bridge and the movie's called The Great Alligator, I think it's a little late for that. Speaking of false advertising, Tarzan isn't in this movie either. And in case you didn't know, this is a Jaws knockoff. Eh, so far this is better than Jaws the Revenge. And should people really be swimming in these waters? As a unique extra, they're setting up a netted area. Over there. It's designed to keep out the crocodiles. Okay, but what about alligators? Isn't that what this movie's supposed to be about? Uh-oh. I think those drums mean they just wandered into an Amazon cannibal movie. And those usually do not end well for foreigners. The boat gets hit by something, and damn, the Italian version of Disney's Jungle Cruise ride is hardcore. I don't know what's attacking them right now, but whatever it is, it's causing the natives to mug like crazy. Oh, never mind, it was just a tree monster from another Italian exploitation movie. False alarm. Listen, I'm glad you survived and all, but it's a little early to be holding the rap party, isn't it? When taking pictures to promote your resort, always make sure you emphasize orgy night. However, I think Daniel might not agree with what Joshua's doing here. What was it like before? Before what? Turned up and ruined everything with this so-called paradise. 
Don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna do the job you hired me for and accept the money you're paying me, but I am gonna bitch and act self-righteous about it the whole time. Dan's just trying to get on the native's good side so he doesn't end up with a stick up his ass. Plus, I think he might be trying to nail Barbara Bach. Would you like to keep me company, if you have the time? Sure. I'm curious to see your work. You'll be disappointed. Funny, that's also what they told Barbara at her audition. And it looks like there's lots of romance in the air this day for night. <laughs> Okay, even though this isn't that kind of movie, the music and photography makes this seem like it's about to turn into a porn at any moment. Hey baby, you know the alligator isn't the only thing in this movie that's big and great. And where the hell are you two going? There's someone over there on the water. Looks like they're going toward the Island of Love. Ah yes, the Island of Love. It's right next to Make Out Jungle. I don't know what everybody's so worried about. Looks like the alligators are all dead. Ooh, hey, this is just like that scene in From Here to Eternity. That is, if that movie was really a Jaws knockoff. And looks like Dan's got some moves of his own. I feel like peeling off with me. Nice one, Dan. Do you always ask like that? Sometimes I'm even more to the point. Yeah, sometimes he just shoves a woman's face right into his crotch. And in case you didn't think this could get any sexier... I'm not sure how to tell you this, but I think the cameraman might be masturbating right now. Well, maybe a little mood music will brighten things up. Yeah, in the 70s, even native tribes had the funk. No, what are you doing? Don't go back in the water! Don't you know alligators can't resist a funky rhythm? <laughs> See? What did I tell you? Rather than hide the gator's appearance to build suspense, just use some quick edits to hide the low budget. Two people may have been killed, but it's nothing a little ass transition can't fix. I knew it was just another hotel for the American tourist. I Excuse wish I'd gone to camp with the nuns. You know, I got bad news for you, kid. They would have just been filming a nunsploitation movie there. Well, at least John Holmes seems to be having fun hitting on Kelly LeBrock. So while everyone's busy mangling the YMCA dance, Daniel seems to be the only one who notices two people have gone missing. Wait a second. This was no boating accident. Could a crocodile do this? Yeah, or maybe an alligator. To tell you the truth, I can't really tell the difference. Daniel tells Joshua about the torn up canoe, and see if you can guess what happens. They found a broken canoe in the river. It's got some strange marks on it. So they found a canoe. Now listen to me carefully, Daniel. You were brought here to take pictures, and that's all. Listen, Dan, this is a summer town. We can't afford to close the beaches. I'm the stand-in for the mayor from Jaws. And besides, just because we've already established these are crocodile-infested waters doesn't mean you can't go swimming. Fun fact, in the 70s, both men and women competed to see who could wear the shortest pants. Come on in! Even if you shit on yourself, no one's gonna see it in here! Okay, not gonna be swimming next to that guy. Jesus, even the alligator seems like he doesn't want to swim behind him. Meanwhile, Dan and Allie go visit the Kumas to see if they know anything about what's going on. Alright, look alive, people. This National Geographic orgy isn't gonna start itself. However, something tells me they're not wanted here. I think he's sending us away. Oh, really? What gave you that idea? The chief explains that they think they're being punished for having contact with the outside world by an ancient alligator god named Kruna. Which is weird, considering they live in a place where crocodiles live and not alligators. They also say that a man called Father Jonathan has supposedly seen Kruna and offered to take Dan and Allie to him, but they're gonna have to make their way through some pretty dense stock footage in order to get to him. Even if they're going the right way, just how the hell are they gonna know who Father Jonathan is when they find him? I am Father Jonathan! Oh. Okay, thanks. Here's hoping Father Jonathan was worth all the effort it took to find him. It's... This guy looks like he spent the last 30 years trapped in a game of Italian Jumanji. It's kind of like regular Jumanji, but with way more animal killing. Jonathan explains that he originally came with several other missionaries, but they were killed by something that he thinks is the river god Kruna. He waited for us in the river, and he overturned our boats. 
Was it a crocodile? Yeah, maybe. Or it might have been an alligator. What exactly is the difference between them again? Now, at this point, you may be wondering, if they're in a part of the world that doesn't have alligators and they keep constantly mentioning crocodiles, then just why the hell is the movie called The Great Alligator? Well, they do kind of address that. He didn't make a crocodile's head. It looks more like a gator, but... But alligators are foreign to the Orient. And that's it. They never explain what an alligator is doing there. They're just like, oh, hey, look, it's a gator instead of a crocodile. Oh, that's kind of weird. Oh, well, guess it's a gator that's killing everybody. So really, when you think about it, they could have just cut that line out and changed the title to The Great Crocodile, and that actually would have made more sense. Oh, well, maybe they thought The Great Alligator sounded better? One thing's for sure, they are dealing with one seriously pissed off theme park animatronic. Or bath toy, it depends on the shot. Another important thing to remember when getting attacked by a gator, swim to the edge of the water, but don't actually get out of it. So, blah blah blah, we can't close the beaches, or resort, whatever, you get the idea. I know what a crocodile is. The thing that overturned the outboard and killed Kush was something else. Was it an alligator? In that river, there is something enormous, and you have to warn the tourists about the danger. If there were something enormous out there, you're still perfectly safe on dry land. Yeah, instead of swimming, they can just stay inside and play on this 70s gaming rig. It's got over 40k of RAM. Joshua doesn't appreciate it when Daniel tries to call for help, and since they're already mixing jungle exploitation movies and Jaws knockoffs, might as well throw a little kung fu in there too. Okay, that's enough. I just wanted you to learn not to touch my stuff without asking first. Besides, they can't leave yet. Sri Lanka's best Osmond Brothers cover band is playing tonight. While everybody's having fun, I think the natives are getting restless. Yes, dear? I just saw someone over there with a crocodile's head. Don't you mean an alligator's... Ah, fuck it, never mind. To prevent people from escaping, the Kumas disable the resort's transportation. Wait a second, this was no helicopter accident! There's diving gear in here, do you know how to use it? Yes, I do. Remember, there are explosives in there. Yes, yes, I'm aware of how we're gonna kill the gator at the end, don't worry. Why don't you go under the water? Well, because I'm one of the most famous actors in this movie. I can't die yet. Besides, there's nothing to worry about since no one dies in this scene. Turns out the gator just likes to fuck with people. In addition to destroying the helicopter, the Kumas also cut off their only way of calling for help. Wait a second, this was no radioactive- Alright, you get the idea. Okay, even though the helicopter's been destroyed and communication's been cut off, they should still be okay as long as they don't go in the water. <laughs> No, we're in the jungle here, we have Tarzan's raft. Oh, you fucking idiot! You know what, as long as you're putting people on a boat, might as well cut out the middleman by covering him in meat and ringing a dinner bell while you're at it. The natives also kidnap Allie in order to sacrifice her to Kruna, but they do leave a surprise for Daniel. Oh shit, there's a poisonous snake in his room! What's he gonna do? Oh, okay, see ya. And hey, just because Allie's about to be sacrificed doesn't mean you can't still get some good shots. You still have a job to do, after all. Daniel goes to rescue Allie, but how are the people on the boat doing? You know, even without the gator, I still kind of feel sorry for this little girl. No, trust me, sweetie, it'll be a great vacation. You can watch all the adults drink and try to hook up with each other while you sit alone in a corner. It'll be fun! Well, it seems like they actually filmed at night this time. Underwater, it looks like it's broad daylight. Hmm, you know, maybe going out into the water was a bad idea. HELP! WE'RE BEING ATTACKED BY A CROCODILE! Actually, I think that's an alligator. WHATEVER! THE POINT IS WE'RE BEING EATEN! And I still don't think this qualifies as a boating accident. Sorry, movie. Alright, you people know the rules for abandoning ship. Women in porn stashes first. Oh, well, these two managed to make it out okay, so they should be safe as long as they don't go back in the water. Idiot! And my mistake looks like it's even more dangerous on land. Quick, get back in the water! Ah!
You know, considering what usually happens to people in Italian jungle movies, she actually got let off easy there. I don't know why the natives are trying to sacrifice Allie. I'm more concerned with the fact that their god seems to be a giant hairy anus. Don't worry, Allie, Dan's not gonna let you die. You never did say if you wanted to peel off with him. Uh, dude, probably not a great idea to get in the water. Barbara Bach, you're my favorite Bond girl. Aw, oh, you asshole, I just wanted an autograph. Meanwhile, the tourists get impatient waiting to be rescued and decide to just swim to safety, which gives the Kuma a perfect opportunity to get back at them for blasting Jimmy Buffett all night long. Ah, uh, just like shooting tourists in a barrel. The natives proceed to destroy the resort, and I suppose this is what Joshua gets for not giving them that raise they asked for. Sri Lankan labor unions do not fuck around. Okay, while I'm sure they took some safety precautions, Mel Ferrer still had a flaming stick fired at him. So props for being a pro there, Mel. With all this chaos going on, the gator's gotta be feeling left out. So far, it's barely killed anybody during this climax. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You people wanted an authentic jungle experience? Well, you got one. Well, at least Dan and Allie made it back to land. Strange that nobody seems to be around. I think that's because they've all been killed, Dan. Oh my god. Yep. Hey, when your only mode of escape is a shaggin' wagon, you gotta take what you can get. Unfortunately for them, the natives don't seem to want them to leave. Wait, I'm on your side! Didn't you hear me complaining earlier? Ravaging your culture? The beauty of nature? Oh, fuck this, I'm out of here. Well, looks like these two managed to get away. Oh great, this movie's gone from Jaws with an alligator to the Poseidon adventure with a van. Oh well, at least these nitrous oxide tanks mean they won't even care if they die. And surprise, the gator's still in this movie. At least now we have a better idea of the gator's size. It's even longer than a toy van. And didn't they mention something about explosives earlier? Uh, hey, now we're talking. Alright, time to blow this thing up and end this movie. Small, you son of a bitch! Good news, you killed the gator and some of the tourists survived. Bad news, the kuma are back and it looks like they've got a wooden stake with your butthole's name on it. Bruna Bali! Bruna Bali! The natives, however, decide to let them go after they find out they've killed the gator. Thanks to them, they now have enough meat to last them a week. And so the survivors were rescued and the authorities proceeded to wipe out the kuma for the mass murder they just committed. The end. So that's The Great Alligator, and I think a better title would have been The... Eh, alligator. Like I said, both of the Sergio Martino movies I reviewed on this show before were actually pretty good. 2019 managed to be pretty original and entertaining, despite obviously being a cash-in, and Torso was interesting for how similar it was to 80s slasher movies, so I actually went into this thinking it might be fun. But instead, it's just kind of boring a lot of the time. The movie takes a long time to get going, and while the addition of a vengeful native tribe helps keep this from being a straight-up knockoff of Jaws, the results are a lot tamer than most other Italian Italian exploitation movies from this time. It's not as shameless as The Last Shark, but if you want a cash-in of a popular American movie that's actually entertaining, I'd go for 2019. But if there's one thing we can take away from this movie, it's that most people don't know the difference between an alligator and a crocodile. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. <laughs>